What is MMD? It's a big fat pig of a disease. Sorry, couldn't resist. It's true though, but more seriously, it's an eye condition. It stands for myopic macular degeneration and it's a complication of myopia or nearsightedness. Hi everyone, my name is Marie. I have myopic macular degeneration and I'm trying to raise awareness about it on this channel. Thank you for joining me. Before we start, a little disclaimer. This is not a medical channel. I am not a medical professional. I am a patient, a sufferer of MMD. This video is not meant to help you self-diagnose. If you suffer any of the symptoms I'm going to mention, please consult an eye specialist. So MMD, myopic macular degeneration. There is myopia in it. What is myopia? Well, myopia is an eye condition and it's the most common eye problem in the whole world. If you take a normal eyeball, it, it is round like this. However, with the myopic eye or nearsighted eye, it is slightly more elongated. The degree of elongation determines the degree of myopia. So the more elongated your eye is, the more myopic you are, the more severely myopic you are. But as we will see, this is not just a case of, oh well, you know, loads of people are myopic, short-sighted. It's just a case of wearing glasses. Unfortunately, no. If you go back to mechanism of myopia, with an elongated or myopic eyeball like this, it means that the light focuses in front of your retina. And this is why myopic people see everything blurry. The longer your eye, the more blurry the image. There are ways to correct this with glasses, contacts, and even surgery, where basically they reshape your cornea, the front part of the eye, okay? So as to change the way light is refracted into your eye, and will then fall onto your retina. So that's great. However, it doesn't cure myopia. It masks it. There are three degrees of myopia. Low, mild, high. It's measured in a unit called diopter, which I'm not going to go into detail about. It's quite complicated for my non-scientific brain. Suffice it to say that a normal eye is considered to need a zero diopter prescription, so no prescription at all. If you have myopia, say you need a prescription from minus 0.5 to minus 3 diopters, you have low myopia. From minus 3 to minus 6 diopter, that's mild or moderate myopia. From minus 6 to minus 10, it's high myopia and from minus 10 onwards, it's very high myopia. So it's actually four degrees. But let's say the high and very high degrees are often conflated together because anything from minus six onwards carries risks. So let's go into those risks. Like I was saying, the myopic eye is stretched. In high degrees of myopia, the stretching is very important. As a consequence, it fragilizes the cells, because of that, you are at risk of some vision impairing or even sight threatening complications. Early cataract is one, for example. A glaucoma, which affects the optical nerve. The optical nerve suffers quite a lot in myopia. Because of the stretching of the eye, it's, it compresses the optical nerve, as I understand it. Correct me if I'm wrong. Retinal detachment is another pretty common one where the, the retina is so stretched that it, it tears and that's that's a medical emergency. You have to get that seen pretty quickly. Fortunately, they can reattach it these days. Floaters is one. It's um, not sight threatening, but it's extremely annoying. Your eye is, is full of something that is called the vitreous. It's like a gel like substance. It's, it's more gel like when you're a child and as you grow older, it sort of liquefies and as it liquefies, it pulls away from the the retina and this fragment of 
fragments of it end up in the in the liquefied substance that is the vitreous. Normally this happens quite later in life, but with the myopic eye, because of the mechanical stretching, it can start pretty early in life. I mean, I, for one, started seeing floaters before I was 10, I'm pretty sure. I can still see myself looking at the, the blue sky. You see them a lot better against a, like a bright plain background. Looking at the blue sky and seeing all these little shapes floating around, I thought it was pretty funny. Little did I know. Now I have so many floaters. I don't even have to look at a bright background anymore to see them. I can see one now, right now, <laughs> floating. Hello. Yes, we talk to our floaters. I've heard of people actually naming their floaters. Some of them can be quite massive. Others can be tiny, all sorts of shapes, and they move as you sort of look around, like there's a momentum. So I've got this floater right now here, and I'm going to look up and I see it zoom past. <laughs> anyway, so that's floaters for you. Another complication, which is actually quite common, and probably the most common complication of all, is myopic macular degeneration. So that happens when the macula, which is the central part of the retina, which you use to do everything in, in life that requires detailed vision. So reading, writing, driving, looking at faces, cooking, you know, everything that you do in normal daily life requires a working macula. So what happens is that because of the stretching, this area becomes deprived of oxygen. And that in turn eventually causes the photoreceptors to die. Now this is called dry myopic macular degeneration. It is progressive. It is not well known at what rate it progresses. It seems to be different for everyone. But let's say that you start with a blind spot somewhere in your vision. A few years down the line, it will almost certainly will have grown. This is what happened. To me, I have blind spots that have expanded expanded, and are still expanding since my diagnosis. There is another form of MMD, and that is the so-called wet form. Now, this is when, again, because of the stretching, your body is trying to remedy that lack of oxygen by building new tiny blood vessels. And because that area is already damaged, the blood vessels are often abnormal. They grow behind the retina, which is fine, but because they're weak and abnormal, they very quickly start leaking fluid or blood. And that that usually causes a rapid loss of vision. Thankfully, there is a treatment for these today. It's the injections that you get into your eye. They're called anti-EVGF. And at the top of my head, I cannot remember what the acronym stands for. But basically, it's to stop the growth of new blood vessels. Now, it's interesting to note that this particular treatment was first developed for AMD, age-related macular degeneration, and was only later trialed for myopic macular degeneration because there is not much research done about myopic macular degeneration. I would like to list a few of the symptoms that you can experience if you develop MMD. So there can be a blurriness, distortions of lines, for example, some double vision. The most common of all and the most obvious of all is blind spots. Any shape, any size, any colour sometimes, usually grey and oftentimes flashing, with flashing inside them. So if you experience any of these symptoms, it is very important to consult immediately an eye doctor. I cannot stress that enough. So please, if you experience those symptoms, rush to your eye doctor. All right, so unless you're a patient yourself, you might not have heard of the condition before. I know I hadn't when I was first diagnosed. Well, Back in 2020, there were 2.6 billion people affected with myopia. Out of these, nearly 400 million were affected with high myopia, the form where the eye is the most stretched and therefore more prone to complications. 
out of these 400 million, 40 million have MMD. 10% of highly myopic people go on to develop myopic macular degeneration. 40 million people in the world at the moment. The projection to 2050, 100 million people will almost certainly develop MMD. And most of them will be of working age because it affects people in the prime of their lives. People in their teens get diagnosed most commonly between their 20s and their 50s over all sorts of age ranges. Yet, what is being done to try and prevent this, to address this problem? Myopia currently is a ticking time bomb. Millions of people will for sure lose their eyesight or be visually impaired if this trend carries on. So you think the trend is known, the trend is well known, excellent. What is being done to try and uh, to try and curb it? Well, there is a lot that is being done at the moment to try and prevent myopia in children before it gets out of control. Because it is well known that myopia starts in children, usually of school age, and if you detect it early, it's easy to screen those who will need more support with their myopia, so high myopes. And although it is not well known why an eye starts to elongate and stretch to become myopic, it is now better understood that it's a combination of genetic and environmental factors. On this topic, there is a very, very good video, which is very informative, which I will put the link down there in, in the description. It is thought there has been a change of lifestyles in especially developed countries the past few decades. Children are spending more time indoors, reading more, spending more time on screens. And so always accommodating in the near distance and less in the far distance. And that is thought to play a role in how myopia develops in more and more children. Is that the only cause? We don't know. There is definitely a correlation, most likely some form of causation. So knowing that, Taiwan, I think, spearheaded a programme where they encourage children to spend two hours a day outside every day, which is thought to be the minimum time needed for the eye to accommodate you know, further and therefore protect it from developing myopia. In Taiwan, they managed to curb the progression of myopia in children. Then, unfortunately, COVID hit and they did see a rise in myopic children again. So there is definitely a correlation there. Other things are being done to try and prevent myopia in children. They use drops of atropine, which paralyzes, I think it's the ciliary muscles around the crystal, so the front part of the eye. And so those drops are given at night and they seem to be quite efficient in stopping the progression of the myopic eye in children. I am not sure there have been studies in adults. There's also special contact lenses that children, children who are, who have a higher degree of myopia and who are slightly older as well, because they need to know, know how to handle the contacts. These contacts are shaped in a way that they sort of reshape your cornea when you wear them at night and during the day they eliminate the need for glasses and seem to be efficient in stopping the progression of myopia as well. So all this is great. You know, we need to prevent myopia in children, absolutely. However, nothing is currently being researched on high myopia in adults, as far as I'm aware. I haven't heard of any current research trying to curb the progression of myopia in adults. Usually 
the myopic eye continues, the highly myopic eye continues to grow, even in adulthood, long after it should have stopped growing. And there's certainly no research on how to treat macular degeneration. As I said earlier, the injections to stop the bleeding only were only adopted for myopic, highly myopic people after they were trialed for AMD, age-related macular degeneration, and proved to be efficient. There is a new drug that has come out that is meant to stop the dry progression of AMD. Again, no research on MMD. So something needs to be done. It's extremely frustrating. There is a lot more awareness about so many macular diseases, yet for some reason, MMD is always on the sideline when it is on the verge of becoming the first cause of the leading cause of blindness in developed countries. It is, I think, in Japan, for example, the leading cause of blindness. So again, something needs to be done. And right now, I would like to speak to any eye specialist, ophthalmologist, who might be watching this video. There is an urgent need for research on MMD. I think, quite frankly, given the amount of people who suffer with MMD, I hate to say this, but it would be worth it financially to do research. I am pretty sure it would be worth it. So what's stopping, what's stopping research from being done? And the only thing I can think of is that the medical field has not caught up yet. I don't know. I don't know. Something needs to be done. Please. All right. So this was my lay woman explanation of what MMD is and how important it is to start looking seriously for a cure or a treatment. It is honestly quite desperate right now. Given the number of people of working age to boot who suffer with this disease. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you're a patient, if you're an eye specialist, tell me what you think. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you in the next few videos. Bye bye.